All right, welcome to another podcast. I've got Mr. Mark Bench with me. Mark is actually one of the OGs in the summer sales. I used to want to say yes to everything. Like like typical high performing salespeople, whatever it takes, I'm going to make the sale or whatever it takes, I'm going to grow this business. Over the last three years, we've taken a different approach. I think we're all capable. It's all at our core. I agree. But there's a significant amount of development where you got to pull back the layer of the onion. You have to go through those experiences, like similar to what you've gone through. You got to learn what you got to learn. It's not like there's no shortcut. All right, welcome to another podcast. I'm stoked about this one. I've got Mr. Mark Bench with me. Um, Mark is actually one of the OGs in the summer sales sales model. I like to consider myself an OG in the summer sales world, but it's not called summer sales anymore. Do you, what is it called now? Do you know? Door-to-door sales. Door-to-door sales? Yeah. But it's year-round. Back in my day, we used to be kind of more summer focused, but I still have summer focus. Yeah, still have summer summer focus. But I mean, towards the end of my days, we we started being you know more focused on year round sales. But anyway, one of the OGs, but now is currently the CEO of Tri Smart Solar. That's right, right in Houston. Yeah, we're all over Texas. Are you so you're all over Texas? Anywhere yeah. else outside of Texas? We cover some Arizona, a some bit Arizona, New Mexico, New Mexico. Yeah, but we're, we we got seven warehouses in Texas. We're the largest installer there. Nice, man. Well, yeah. congrats. Thank you. So Mark, we actually, I, I don't know if we've actually formally met, but I've always known about him because like in this world, you know who top dogs are. It's a small world. It, it is dogs. a small world. Yeah. And so top dogs, no top dogs yeah. and have respect for top dogs. But um, anyway, we're, we're going to have some fun today I, talking about the door-to-door sales experience. Mm-hmm. I And I was telling Mark this right before we started. I don't think that there is a better opportunity for a young man or woman to then to get out there and experience a door to door experience and the things that it does for you professionally Mm -hmm. as an individual. um, Just how how do you feel about that? Do you agree with this? hundred percent agree. There's no better way to like have people experience themselves uh, as I call it a stress test. Like if you're willing to go and do it, um, all your skills can be heightened, enlightened. You learn who you are at totally. the core and you just keep pulling that towards you. And like people really learn a lot from the industry of door to door. There's some, I mean, if you look at the industries that it has fed, like our OG network from yeah. the beginning, you look at all the amazing businesses that have started and the amount of contribution those businesses are in the world. A lot of them have stemmed from all the door to door companies that absolutely you know, got started here. So. Yeah, there's a there's so much more that people get out of door to door than just a few bucks. No doubt, no yeah. doubt. I and I, you know, I started knocking doors at a very young age. Did you was was your first door knock selling something doing? Yeah, when I was, was 16, selling oh. oil changes for the high school fundraiser, yes. you know, for the football team. Yeah, and dude, then that's... I got into satellite TV, and I did oh, I did my own window washing business in my senior year of high school, so I knocked doors for that. Nice man. Yeah, so I knocked a lot of doors actually before I served the mission. Nice man. Uh, yeah, door to door. I got started real young. Very cool. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Sandy, Utah. In Sandy. Just down the road. Very, very cool. Um, are you related to Johnny Bench? <laughs> Funny story. Yeah, John Bench is my dad. Yes. Not the Johnny Bench. But John Bench. John Bench is my father. That's right. And Johnny Bench, for those of you that don't know, like the guy behind the camera here that would know nothing about a legendary baseball player. Just kidding, James. <laughs> uh Johnny Bench is one of the greatest catchers of all time. And I learned that this guy played catcher for how long? Nine years, baby. Nine years, yeah. dude. You got any knee problems? Nope, not yet. Did you know? Have you noticed how catchers are now taking a knee in certain pitches, during certain pitches and during the bats? Yeah. Do you think that, the, I, I mean, and there's a reason, do you know the reason for it? Tell me. It's, it's you become more of a brick wall. You're able to stop more. That's what I understand. Yeah. So I, it's, it's, it's kind of a new age. You know, there's a lot of changes that happen with sports as time goes on. It's yep. interesting. It's all evolving. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, so tell me about tell me about Try Smart. Um, started thirteen years ago. Yeah. Um, you're in those different states. How many reps do you have? We're a dealer network only now. Oh, okay. So we we handle everything from sale to install. Um, and we're the best in class at that, and we got a lot of room to grow. So, we have probably forty five dealers. I'd say maybe a couple thousand reps on our platform, awesome. give or take. Awesome. Depending on the time of year. Uh, would most of your sales come from inside or? door door knocking yeah great question um the dealer network consists of you got some 
call center only models where they just dial. You got some that are uh, digital marketing only where they just transact business online. But I'd say 90% of our business is still door to door. And of that, probably 80% saw all summer sales door to door. Very cool. So we still Very have cool. that high end flux in the summer. Very cool. So many of you may not know about the whole door to door game. I, I think you could do a reality show totally. around like it, it's insane. So not only is it incredibly tough, um, do you learn a lot about yourself, but it is some of the most trying, crazy, out of control experiences that you could ever have. I mean, the stories, I mean, my brothers, all, all my brothers did this for years. I got all of, I conned them all into coming and joining me in my office. And, <laughs> and we have stories for life you know, based on our experiences on the door. But it's interesting because uh, if you have done this before, there's definitely things that you can do as a salesman while you're out there that that you have a lot of pride in. And so uh, one of those things, a question that, that a lot of guys like to tout if they were good is, how many deals did you do in a day? How many deals did you do in a week? What's your best year in sales? And so for me, my best day ever, and this was back in the day when it was not as easy to sell, I sold six in one day, and I was pretty proud of that. Then I talked to this guy. How many sales did you do in one day, Mark? Uh, 2008, my biggest summer, I did 15. There were multiple days where I did 10 plus. For the record, that is stupid. <laughs> stupid good. And and if you know this ball game too, there's pest control, then there's security or home automation sales, security, and then there's solar. So I, from what I understand, I, I someone had told me once that pest control, it's like three to one yeah. as opposed to, to alarms. And then solar is like 10 to one. What, pest control. Oh, yeah. Would you agree with that? Yeah, that's probably close. So like in like security to, I, what would you say? One solar deal is about how many uh, security sales? Probably five, four to five. Four to five. Yeah. That's crazy. So do you remember your earliest pay scale? How much were you getting paid for one deal yeah, your first dude, summer? Yeah, back in the day, 2008, I think I was getting like $125 up front. And then maybe total, I was making 600 or something. So I think my NDA is over. So Yeah, yeah, you can tell. Yeah. Well, that for me, I know I'm dealing with an OG <laughs> if they say they were getting paid 125 Because that right. was like- That was the OG that, scale. That's right, that's right. In my first summer, I did like 160 deals. Yeah. And I made bank. <laughs> I mean, I was 21 and I think it made 40 grand. That's a lot of money for a 20, yeah. a 21 year old, right? Um, so what where was your first summer? Where did you sell? My first summer when I was 17 was in Detroit, Michigan. We Detroit. Were, I was with a company called Alliance Marketing. Yeah. Jake Taylor, Matt yeah. Sturzer. Uh, my OG guys were like Lane Thompson, Kate Smith, oh, Courtney yeah. Jones, These are OGs. Gavin George. These are OGs. Uh, Steve Haney was there with me. His brothers are Paul and Brian Haney. And so, yeah, I did like 110 my first summer as a 17 year old kid. That's awesome. Uh, man. and then I went on my mission and then, uh, you know, they bounced my back end. I came home and they were icon. Who the heck was That's right, icon. icon. So I ended up over at Apex. I was like, oh, those were all my buddies are. So who yeah. recruited you uh, at Apex? Lane Thompson and I sold Dish Network together right right down the street in Provo, Utah when I was 17. And awesome. he recruited me to go to Detroit That's great. Alliance. And then he recruited me to Apex. So he was my guy. He's my mentor. That's awesome. Lane's a good dude. Yeah. And for those of you that don't know this as well, it is a cutthroat business when it comes to recruiting. Like cutthroat. But a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of fun. Um, yeah, so Icon was purchased by Pinnacle, which was my company. Yep. So, you know, brought, brought those boys in, both yeah. awesome. Jake Taylor, Matt Sturzer. Yeah, good I, I love those guys, they're good dudes. Except they stole one of my best friends from me when I talk about the recruiting, cutthroatness. <laughs> they, they stole Brett and Stout. I still don't forgive you, Brett, and you sucker. Um, <laughs> but it is a wild, it's a wild ride. So stories. I want to talk stories for a second. What is the craziest story that you can remember off the top of your head when you were out there doing your deal, you know, selling? Do you have a story? Oh, crazy? man, I got lots of stories. Did you ever get jumped? Did you ever get like- Guns pulled. I never got guns? jumped. Um, I got held up by a butter knife. Oh, geez. Yeah, it was serious. I was yeah. like, are you, can, are you serious, man? No, I watched I watched a couple like full on getting a brawl in front of me, a married couple. So I had to leave. That was awkward. Man and woman Police, fighting? Yeah. They, in they, their house while you're selling one of them? I had just gotten in the house, sat down, was doing paperwork. Husband comes out. He was upset about something completely different. 
he didn't even acknowledge that I was in the room and they start yelling. And all of a sudden she smacked him and then he shoved her. And then some other dude came out. I think it was the older son and had to like split them up. And they were just brawling for probably a straight five minutes. And uh, the cops got called. Yeah, it was crazy. I was like, I'm out of here. So, just so as, soon, as soon as the cops over, you would go back to the house. Hey, we need to get this deal finished. Yeah, that was that? back in Fort Worth, Texas. It's crazy. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Um, did you get dropped off or were you traveling out on your own? I love this question, actually. So my last summer in a full program was 2008 yeah. with Apex. I was in Colorado Springs. And one of the things I identified was in order to be a high performer, I had to give up certain freedoms. And I remember at the manager conference, I told all the managers I was going to sell over 300 that summer. And Bodie Gardner uh, said to me, well, how are you going to do that? I said, well, I'm actually going to give up the, the keys to my car because I don't have the discipline to get out of my own car. And he said, well, if you don't have that discipline, then you shouldn't be a manager. So I carried that chip on my shoulder the whole summer and I ended up doing 437 accounts in 16 weeks because I got dropped off every day. And I sold close to 200 accounts before 2.30 in the, in the afternoon. I ran like 1200 credits that year. Um, wow. I did 49 in a week, 123 in August. And then of course, 15 in a day. Uh, it was the best summer ever. It was just, amazing, out of, it was an out of a, out of body experience really. And uh, it was, it was just bizarre. You know, just giving up the keys to your car. I paid someone, I think five grand that whole summer to just drive me out and drop me off every day. And uh, that was the best decision I could have made. It was just giving up that freedom. I love that. And I think there's so much to be learned by what you just stated. Um, I remember telling all my guys, because I managed a, a number of people, um, and we used to call the car or your keys the ring. So like the Lord of the Ring, yeah. you're drawn to it, right? That ring. And, and and I think that there's a parallel or there's, you know, there's something to be said about the ring for any situation in any business. And everyone knows what that ring is for themselves. In this case, so so what, what, what I'm talking about when I asked him if he was getting dropped off, like he just explained, most managers will take a truckload or bus full of sales guys and drop them off in their areas to work in. Yeah. And that's not fun because you're getting dropped off at what, noon? I mean, yeah. what, what, I'm trying to remember when I, like yeah. 11 or noon. Yeah, and, depending on the day, yeah. And then you are to bust your can until nightfall, right? And mm -hmm. even past night. And... I remember when I got dropped off my first summer, it was like two weeks in and I was like, what in the hell am I doing out here? This is miserable. I wasn't mm. selling as in the hood of Chicago. Yeah. Um, but I'm grateful that that I had that opportunity to get dropped off because had I had the car or the keys to my car, I would have gotten in it, probably taken a nap, yep. probably would have head, headed home That's right. early. So I guess the moral of the story is be aware of what that ring is for you and ditch it because the possibilities are endless if you can get rid of that ring. And I, I would say that the same thing could, you know, apply towards life. Um, you know, the things that are holding you back, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of people aren't willing to get rid of that ring. Yeah. It's almost always a freedom that you've given yourself that you're just not, that's, yeah, it's holding you back. It's standing between you and what you want to do. So what do you think if you had to say, I'll give you two things. If you were to say two things that a characteristic that you must have to find true success in your professional career, what are those two things? Uh, two words. Self-awareness. Self-awareness. Yeah. Being self-aware of what the rings are that you're holding on to and what your opinions are and that there's other opinions out there. So yeah, being self-aware um, and being connected to others. Like we're in the business of people. For so, sure. you know, when you get, we can get out of here, get, get out of your own mind and, and get out here with people and actually connect with people. That's the difference maker. I totally agree. I actually just saw a statistic recently around more people are purchasing or buying products because of a connection with someone, mm -hmm. even more so than the product itself. Um, right. It's, I mean, we're all marketing ourselves, especially in you know business. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I totally agree with that. I, I've always said the two characteristics that I think someone truly needs to have to go find professional success is discipline and courage. Mm. Courage, courage is one of my favorite words in the whole world. Just courage, man. You gotta have courage. Yeah. To 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 go out and be willing to try or test something to to put yourself out there because most people don't have courage. Right. It took courage to start TriSmart. Yeah? Yes, it did. It's kind of terrifying at times when you think about Still starting. Still is, man. Still is. Right. Yeah. But doesn't it make it fun? It's fun. Yeah. It keeps it lively. 
Did you start TriSmart with a friend, partner, or did you just roll solo? I started by myself in 2010. Wow. Yeah. So I would assume you have partners now. Are you the sole owner or do you have investors? Yes. Sole owner. Yeah. Look, we had, I mean, this is an interesting question. I had a partner for nine years, John Morris. Love that guy. Good guy. Uh, we've come to the end of our partnership. Yeah. And so that's no longer the case. But for nine years, we worked together from 2012 to 21. Wow. We're in the process of kind of unwinding that still, but cool. Yeah. Partners are important. 50, oh. 50 partners, really difficult. I could probably write a book on that. Different podcast, different day. Um, yeah. The first two years I was rolling solo and realized I, I want a partner. I need a partner. There's, and that was because I wasn't really self-aware. I've done a lot of looking and personal development over the years. And so as I become more self-aware, uh, that's been helpful in business. Um, but I was always looking for the void to fill. Yeah. So at the time, a partner made the most sense. I like that. That's great advice. Yeah. You know, what's funny is I got into this whole podcast thing that I was going to joke around with you, Mark, and have fun talking <laughs> trash on some of the OGs and stuff. Oh, we but can I'm totally actually, do that if we, you want. we might we might have to do that as outtakes. But um, I'm I'm really I'm really enjoying this because I there's so the reason I love doing this is because I learn stuff when I'm talking to like mm -hmm. you know other fellow entrepreneurs and business owners. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go deeper into talking about you know experiences. What I mean, if you're open to being vulnerable. Sure. What do you think your greatest weaknesses have been up to this point? Like, cause I, you know, I just brought, I, I don't know if you're aware, I just got a new partner and he's amazing. He's Paul. absolute, yeah. I you heard know, Brett told me like 30 seconds of Paul and that he's incredible. He's brilliant. Congratulations. That's thank awesome. Thank you. It's awesome. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. But, but um, the reason I'm so crazy excited about him is because he absolutely fills the void. Meaning where I suck yeah. at, Cause I've got, I've got my strengths and I'm aware of my strengths. You know, I'm proud yeah. of my strengths, but I have massive numbers of issues. I have a massive number of, of things where I fall short. Um, is what do you feel like have been your greatest weaknesses mm -hmm. that you have been working to, to overcome or maybe fill the void with a partner or I don't know yeah. anything that you've had to focus on it's because great. you know, it's one of your weaknesses. I, I, look, I think humanity and business, it's all it's all uh, like an ecosystem. So our strengths and weaknesses will evolve. So my, I'd say my biggest weaknesses early on was I thought I knew everything. I was overly confident. You know, I'm a typical sales guy that went and set national records. So therefore you're the best. I should be the best at anything. You know, I everything, do, which was a complete, you know, fail on my part. Same. So I had to go through the hard, I had to hit the, the bottom and realize, okay, I don't know everything. I got kicked off the high horse. And so, and then as I've, you know, continue to take on like, okay, well, what does it look like to be a leader? What's most important? People are most important. Vision's important. Your values are important. I used to put all those things aside and say, no, just go work discipline, you know, discipline. just sell a lot. Right. So, you know, today I'd say my biggest weakness is probably I, where I used to have a lot of self-confidence as I've gone through this huge pendulum swing. Now it's like reconnecting with my core confidence and like loving myself again, like I used to after going through Awesome. actually connecting with man, you really aren't that great. So I've like almost torn myself down to a humble state. And it's like, do I really have what it takes? Am I really the guy for the job? So my biggest weakness today is just loving myself the way that I used to and having that core confidence to be the leader and show up every day for my people. Um, Dang, man. I'm, yeah. I'm not going to lie. You couldn't have said it in a more eloquent way for me. I'm the same thing. In fact, I was in the depths of hell. But right before I met Paul, like I literally was like, I can't do this anymore. Yeah. I'm, I'm 10 years deep into this. And I came in super arrogant. I knew everything. You know, I, I knew that this company was going to be worth billions of dollars. And I got my trash kicked yeah. and humbled. And um, I still feel like, and I got down on myself. Like I'm not, I'm not capable. I'm not good enough for this. Yeah. And, um, started losing confidence because I always walked into a room confident mm -hmm. in what, what my product was, what we, what we could do and what solutions we could provide. But, um, I made so many mistakes because of arrogance and, um, because of, uh, lack of understanding mm -hmm. was a big, big thing. And, um, but I, same, same situation, everything that you just stated, yeah. I, I feel that too. Anything else? Man, I think, I mean, the, the question is, you know, what's the biggest weakness now? 
um, re- balance. I, I, I preach this a lot. Balance is, I, I don't believe in balance. I really don't. I think that at least if you want to be a high performer, like high performers have to intentionally create out of balance to go focus a hundred percent of their energy on one thing for a duration of time. Right. That's why these summer programs are so valuable for people because they literally are pulling imbalance towards them. They're going hard for 108 days, 10 hours a day, go, go, go. And they got one thing in mind and one thing only people's health gets put aside, their family situations, put. you know, everything's all about sales. So for high performers, for me, balance has been a challenge. Cause I, you know, I, I preach like family's important family first. And at the same time, I'm on a mission to be a high performer in my space and be like the best installer in Texas. And so it's like a constant resetting of what balance looks like. So I look at it like a game of whack-a-mole. You're going to focus on one thing, be imbalanced for a while and go, you know, make it as good as you can. And then you're going to come back to all these other little fires you started that you weren't aware of and start, you know, taking care of those. And I believe that there's a way to do that with integrity and, you know, with commitment. I'm just learning how to do that. Um, it's really messy right now. So it's good. Yeah. It's, it's a messy, messy process. Everything um, is messy. When yeah. It comes to business. It's fun though. That's, that's what makes it fun. Yeah. Right? No doubt. No doubt. What do you feel like you're doing right? Like if someone, and this is where I want you to lose your humility. What are you great at and why? I appreciate that. Um, I think, you know, as, as a CEO, I had a great mentor last year. His name is John Mortensen. We hired him as our CFO. He's, he's uh, in his sixties and he's taught me one thing. He said, look, your job is to, to build a team build a team that's unmessable with. So I feel like I've done that now pretty well. We have a great executive team and my job is to connect them. So bridging the gap of communication and having one, everyone operate on the same page. We seek alignment as a team. We move forward as a team where I used to just call the shot and go and then everyone would just be upset. Now it's, we're moving together in one unit. That's good, man. Uh, I, th- I feel like I connect with people really well. Yeah. Um, I love people. People are our purpose. So establishing a vision and values that go with that vision, those values are going to serve that vision. So creating values and a vision and a purpose with a team is, is what I feel like I'm doing a good job in. Um, and then just maintaining course, you know, just being disciplined in the initiative. I used to want to say yes to everything like, like typical high performing salespeople, Whatever it takes, I'm going to make the sale or whatever it takes, I'm going to grow this business. Over the last three years, we've taken a different approach. We're being disciplined. We're drawing boundaries and we're using those boundaries to empower us rather than to say these are bad and wrong. Where I used to meet a boundary and want to move through it or, you know, move it completely. I'm holding boundaries as an empowering context so that our operation team can have something to work from rather than constantly shifting it all around. Awesome, man. Yeah, that's that's good stuff right there. That's great stuff. Thanks, man. Well, I mean, the one thing I notice about you, when when you walk into a room, you carry a vibe and it's it's a powerful vibe. Um, and you know, you you definitely walk into a room and and there's there's a respect level. You demand respect subtly, which is really cool. Like so you have you have an aura about you. And I think that that's something that I mean, do you think that leaders just are born leaders or do you think that being a leader is developed over I love time? That question. My kids actually go to Acton Academy. It's a private school that has ontological uh, teaching. And that one of their themes for the year was, are leaders born or are they made? And you can't say both, right? They keep to pick one or the other because it's a Socratic method. Yeah. Um, I believe leaders are developed. I think that, you know, I think we're all capable. It's all at our core. I agree. But there's a significant amount of development where you got to pull back the layer of the onion. You have to go through those experiences, like similar to what you've gone through. You got to learn what you got to learn. It's not like there's no shortcut, right? You just got to go through life's experiences and those who are pulling it towards them and and interested in just going through the hard, we got to choose our hard. It's hard to be poor. It's hard to be wealthy. It's hard to be unhealthy. It's hard to be healthy. Choose your heart. If you want to lead, choose it. So for me, you know, the other thing that I'd say that's helped me a significant amount is I, I have a coach. I actually have two. I have like a business coach that I meet with once a week. So I'm very coachable. Um, actually executing is a different story, but I also have an energy coach. There's so much going on inside of us that we've just got to move, like Absolutely. move through us. So I'm, I'm big into all of that. Like if there's anything that can help me become a better human being where I can love more, accept more and be capable of being with anything. That's what I'd impart on anyone is like, get a coach or two or three, you know, in whatever realm that you're wanting to improve. Um, 
because that's that's critical for leaders. So Absolutely. yeah, leaders I think are developed. I like At the that core, answer. we all have that. We all have the capability. It's just there's you gotta you gotta go for it. Yeah, I, I really like that. Um, you know, one of the things I struggled with a lot, and I don't know if you had the same struggle early on, is I surrounded myself with a bunch of yes men, meaning everything I said was golden, great, and just dialed. Yeah, exactly. man, that's yep, perfect. I did too. Until all hell broke loose and <laughs> started learning that that is a bad thing. So the question I have for you, who calls you out? Who keeps you real? Who is the the person or people that that keep you in check and help you know whether or not you're headed in the right direction? And number one, my best, biggest, and favorite coach is my wife. She She's incredible. She calls me out. She sees it like it is. So she's been critical to my personal training and development. And I can't give her same, enough credit. Same. Like, People think that I'm like really, you know, doing it, which is, I'm just the face. She's really been such a critical She's piece. the core, the rock. Right. So her, and then I do have a business coach. Actually, there's like a, a duo. They call me out all the time. And then as much as I encourage or train the executive team to like hold me accountable, because I'm a demand for that. I'm like, look, if you see me doing anything that just doesn't line up with what I say, I need you and want you and really demand of you to call it out. They've gotten better at that. We just recently hired a new COO who's a badass and he is absolutely on it. Like he's like, sure, free reign. I'm Let's gonna go. go for it. So yeah. he's done a great job yeah. actually calling all of us out and yeah. every team needs one or two. For sure. Right. That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, dude, I I really have appreciated you being on. This was kind of we kind of threw this together last second, thanks to good old Brett McCormick. But um Yes, sir. You you've uh, thrown some awesome bits of advice and business mentorship and and I appreciate it. And so uh, thank you for coming on, man. For Thanks real. for having me. It's yeah. been a lot of fun. So one of the things that uh, I like to ask all of my guests, and I don't have it sitting here next to me, so I apologize. What is your favorite cereal? Dude. Your number one. Love Crunch, chocolate peanut butter. Your chocolate peanut butter It's crunch? like a granola Love Crunch. Love Crunch. It's called Love Crunch. It's granola with like chocolate parcels and peanuts and peanut butter in it. It's high in calories, okay. super yummy though. Okay. Yeah. Love so crunch. just so you know, this is the first time I've ever heard of the cereal, which right. is next now to you impossible for me because I eat you're, every you're cereal. You're a cereal machine, man. Yeah, I am a cereal machine. Do you know who makes it? Uh, I'll Dude, I'll send you a picture. I don't know who makes it. It's not Malto Meal, right? I don't know. I'll have to go look. <laughs> okay. But if yeah, if you're talking like streamlined cereal, I'd probably go with Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Okay. Like the one that everyone knows. My I'm dude. A, my dude. In fact, please hold <laughs> I actually do have this on hand right next to my cinnamon toast crunch shoes. Yes, dude. Coyotes. What? Yeah, I got you. I got wow. You. That's anyway. great, man. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. All right. So we'll close it up. Thanks for being on, Mark. Uh, today's episode sponsored by Prime, uh, one of the best choices for hydration on the planet. Thank you. Until next time. Sayonara.